just in the morning and who could have seen this coming? Absolutely downpour it. I think I've lost a brake. I can't get the car slowed down. The rear wing is gone. Just before the free practice session begins, let's take a quick look at the Drivers' Championship. Schumacher first. Well, that covers the drivers. Let's take a quick look at the constructors next. McLaren lead the Constructors' Championship and arrive here having finished a legendary 1-2 in the last race. Can they do it again? Ferrari are second. Stewart are third. Located within the urban setting of Monte Carlo, the claustrophobic Monaco street circuit is essentially a never-ending sequence of hairpin turns and chicanes with no margin for error. Whilst the jewel in Formula One's crown makes for a truly glamorous sponsor-friendly spectacle, it is very much an anachronism in today's safety oriented era. It's hard to believe I'm going to be racing around these streets at upwards of 180 miles an hour in a couple of days' time. Monaco is, uh, well, the jewel in the F1 crown, as the, uh, as the announcer puts it. And uh, it's a race where it's super important to do well and super important to, to stay in the race. A race of massive attrition that we've seen in the past. Only three years ago now, uh, Olivier Panis in, in a Prost, funnily enough, I guess that's against Ligier at the time, but soon to be a Prost, actually won this race. Um, you know, I wonder <laughs> how much someone won on that bet, but um, it just goes to show that you know getting the car to the line here is the most important thing you can do. Obviously setup is going to be very important here. Um, it's a very bumpy track, so we're going to be forced pretty much to run quite a soft setup with quite a high ride height. It's the highest ride height that we run during this calendar. I can't think of anywhere else that would require anything, uh, anything higher. Uh, the bumps here really are very aggressive. If you hit one the wrong way, you can quite easily spin the car or send it into a, a massive lockup and ending up obviously ending your race earlier than you intend it to. As for acceleration and downforce, we're looking really to have maximum acceleration. We're only going to be topping out you know, 180 miles an hour will be probably quite a uh, enthusiastic guess as to how high we're going to be going here and that will be reached just after the tunnel breaking down for uh, the very tight chicane there so we're really looking to get that sorted out early because we need maximum running around here to uh, ensure a good race. Unlike Imola, uh, Monaco is a very slow speed circuit so uh, brake failure isn't something that I'm going to be worrying about too much. Obviously it's in the back of my mind seeing that Imola we had that brake failure and I think it was four laps from the end which uh, lost us three positions right at the end of the race very frustrating but we still managed to end the race which is something that like I said earlier I'm really hoping to do here okay so the first practice was an interesting session for us uh, we were experimenting a lot with brake bias around here obviously we want to get the car slowed down quickly but we find there's a lot of downhill sections here that mean when you're using rear brake bias the car will step out and make things very difficult for you so we've gone a bit further to the front i think we're running something like 52 48 on the brake bias here and it's working very well so far in terms of stability the speed is yet to come but obviously we have a couple more practice sessions yet so hopefully it will come later on well here we are then in the practice two and there you go top of the time sheets that's the first to me i'll put that in my uh, book of first for f1 which is really nice to see uh, it's sort of bittersweet though because we were doing some lower fuel runs so realistically you know this isn't really correct obviously with Jack Vilner being second over Michael Schumacher as well uh, you know, the, 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 the standings were a bit messed up I think they were doing higher fuel runs than us so I'm not really that uh, that excited but it's still nice nonetheless. Now here we are then qualifying now just about to begin. And I'm feeling fairly confident. Obviously, I've got a lot to live up to. I've had a fourth place and a second place qualifying position in the last two races. And uh, obviously, one bet would be pole, but I'm not really that. Uh, I'm not uh, seeing that. And the realistic goal is to hopefully be in the top 10. It's important to be near the front of the grid here because the grid's so close together. And obviously, overtaking here is a bit of a nightmare. So let's see how we do. It's also really important to note that traffic is going to be a big issue around here. If we get stuck behind any other cars on a qualifying lap, it's pretty much over. So fitting out into traffic and getting a good uh, amount of open space is really important for uh, a good qualifying lap.
Through the apex of the final corner, James Graham setting up now for his hot lap in qualifying, accelerating through to almost 170 miles per hour before a heavy braking zone down into the first turn. Now heading up the hill, big moment there, maybe a bit too much on throttle. Coming up towards Massenet, a long, long left hander, almost a little bit off camber through the centre, getting it over to the left again to turn it in for Casino and down the hill, getting through sector one, avoiding the bump over to the left. Big braking down into the first of the hairpins and now into a very, very tricky hair. First gear, barely 30 miles per hour through the apex. Very tricky one to call. Again, second gear, hard right, barely any speed through this sector. Not how Formula One cars are meant to be driven. They are much better at high speed. Into the tunnel now, the lights filling your vision, waiting to go back out into the daylight and then a heavy, heavy braking zone down into the first of the chicanes on this lap as you can see a little bit of traffic forming up ahead here. Accelerating now through the fast left, heading towards the swimming pool section of the lap. Again, left, right, using up all of the curb there on the right, a little tap on the wall to the outside. Right again, you can see just how slow you have to drive the car around Monaco. Heading now up towards the Rascas. Just a little bit of traffic up ahead. Held him up maybe a little bit there through the final corner. Anthony knows, and it's going to be on the power. A little bit twitchy there, heading right the way up and across the line. That's going to be a provisional second place in qualifying for James Grahams. Looks like the rumours of being a hot lapper are starting to come to fruition. I managed to put it on the fourth spot of the grid for tomorrow's race of a 25-5. Uh, pole position was a 24-3, so we weren't quite close enough to get anywhere near that. But the car felt pretty good. There were a couple of scary moments in the qualifying lap. I think I just brushed the wall on one occasion, but we managed to get through it okay. Jarno didn't do so well. He qualified down 11th place. But what's more important, obviously, being in this race and being at this... Uh, circuit is that fourth place is uh, going to be very uh, easy to defend so I'm really hoping that tomorrow I can finally you know convert a good position a good position to points what can I say getting a decent grid position here is uh, much more eventful than it is getting at other races I've experienced so far anyway I mean I've, I've been completely mobbed by the media yesterday um, I had everyone over me just asking for interviews, you know, asking how I think I'm going to do tomorrow, etc. And some of them, unfortunately, mentioning my uh, last couple of races where I've started well, you know, a good spot on the grid, but just throwing it away as the race goes on. But luckily for me, this time, if we're referencing the last race, it looks dry today. And I'm really quite confident that I can pull some points out of the bat for today. So, obviously, the standard thing, I'm going to be practicing some standing starts. That's super important here. I'm going to have uh, Mika Hakkinen directly in front of me, so I'm going to have to try and keep it with him. Rubens is going to be behind me directly, and he's really fast on the getaways, so we can really try and outdo him uh, for this start. Okay, here we are then, uh, just sitting on the grid, waiting for the formation lap to begin. Uh, race setup has been applied to the car, so we're going for a two-stop this race. Uh, I'm hoping to try and uh, make the most of those soft tyres that we use for qualifying as well. Obviously, compounds are locked. If you're using the qualifying, you've got to use it for the race as well. Really hoping that we uh, have a better strategy than the cars around us. Obviously, we're a little bit less uh, experienced being in this position uh, on a track with uh, so little overtaking room. So really hoping to make the Prost as wide as I can this race and... Just finally, I really want some points. I'm really, you know, really after those points today. Hello there. Welcome to Monte Carlo for round four of the 1999 FIA Formula One World Championship. The weather, as so often is the case here, is just wonderful. Michael Schumacher, first. Hakkinen, second. David Coulthard, third. The Prost driver performed brilliantly in qualifying to line up fourth. Schumacher, fifth. Barrichello, sixth. Villeneuve, seventh. Giancarlo Fisichella, eighth. Heinz Harald Frentzen, ninth. Diniz, tenth. Trulli was way off the pace of his teammate. He starts in 11th. Damon Hill, 12th. 
Johnny Herbert, 13th. Ricardo Zonta, 14th. Zanardi, 15th. Eddie Irvine, 16th. Alexander Wurtz, 17th. Pedro de la Rosa, 18th. Alexei, 19th. Takagi failed to get anywhere near the pace of his championship rival. He starts in 20th. Badoa, 21st. Marc Genet, 22nd. Well, here we are then sitting on the grid. Belts tight as they should be. Everything looking good in the car. Formation that completed. And really, it's just a matter of how, you know, it's in my hands now. I need to treat the car well. Uh, brakes are good round here, no sort of hard braking zones, so I look fairly confident in the, the brakes uh, and how they're going to continue through the race, hopefully no failures this time. Uh, Got to really keep an eye on the, the walls here, so easy to just be dragged into and it'll end your race pretty much straight away, so let's hope for the best today. Just keep an eye on those lights in the top left hand corner, just above me hacking in this car. Three lights, four and five revs are low. Not a bad getaway, we are jumping with one of the Williams off the start. Still in fifth though, so not too bad at all. Car on the inside, wow. That's Zonta, I think. No, it's Vilna really smashing up the inside. Looks like he's damaged himself though, so I'm going to go for the overtake. Silly bugger doing that. No room for either of us there as the car is heavy on the first lap. Still in fifth position though, still on the points. Car very heavy on the first lap. Avoiding the bumps to the left there. Other people that seem to have better set up an ID to be able to take that bump at full speed if I hit it I just pirouette off and uh, Schumacher very slow but I can't do anything about it got to go around here line of stern very difficult to overtake anywhere in Monaco but that's one of the places you can do it the car a little bit screwed at the start looks like Schumacher hit the wall oh my god there goes his rear wing nearly just going past my my helmet there just just avoiding that and, and Coulthard as well I think maybe Schumacher followed Coulthard into the wall we're going to go up the inside now if Schumacher get that done past him and his damaged car we've got cool fuds in front of us wings everywhere looks like the guys at the front having issues as well going past cool five now into third position schumacher ahead of us michael has lost his wings as well so that'll be second place after the first lap drama real drama we managed to get through clean though somehow i have no idea just dodging all the debris it's like everyone having a really difficult first lap round here it is hard Schumacher in the pits then, it's like Irvine and Villeneuve having a, some sort of spar match behind him. We're in second position after the first lap. Oh my god, second position. Hackerton, seven seconds up the road, he had a fantastic first lap. But we're on a podium after just a second lap and I can't let that thought get into my head. I need to just keep it out of the wall. Super important that I do well around here. I need to show the team that I am capable of high finishes as well as decent qualifying positions. And this may be the race to do it. Ooh, wow, that's what I mean by the bump there, nearly getting into that wall on the right. This is what I mean by the nerve setting in. I need to really try and put that on my head and just be professional at the moment. Just focus on keeping it in between the white lines and out of those uh, ever looming grey barriers to the left and right of me. A bit slow through there but safe which is important. Barrichello is now behind us. Hopefully they can keep me up to date with any sort of retirements. I'm sure a lot of people have had issues so far. I think Verts just retired. So we need to kind of sit to our strategy. This it should stay dry through here, so it's just a matter of just driving well here. Lots of issues it seems in the last sector. Surprising not seeing a safety car come out, to be honest, with all the people having issues here. See all the skid marks on people on their uh, previous laps going off. Luckily they aren't ours, they're not one of ours. Barrichello seems to be holding at a similar sort of pace. Hacken is pulling away, but I'm not too bothered about that. Just focused on consolidating my position right now, nice and slow through turn one. Get my throttle, still the rear tires lighting up. Deniz is running fourth currently. This shows how many issues have been in the first lap. That's a good Good for him though. One time people are already out. Sounds like the race of attrition is really taking hold. Very odd to be at the front of the grid. It's a completely new feeling to be actually holding position. 
here. Oh, big moment there. Just clipped the ball with my tyre. I think we're okay. I've not, I can't find anything odd at the front. This shows you how easy it is to throw it all away. Heart in my mouth regardless though. And breaks not up to temperature perhaps. Maybe the bias is slightly off for this weight. Barrichello closing in but he'll have nowhere to get past me. I'll make sure of that. Nice and easy in the break through here. It's so easy just to get the rear of the car come round on you. And through here as well where it's super bumpy and you're turning through Raskas and up towards Anthony so Nose. One of the more difficult parts of the track in terms of threading the car through because the walls are just there either side. I can extend his lead, not surprised after I look the moment. The car's still not good through there. Still waiting, we really want to burn off some of this fuel. Big bump on the left there, we may have to avoid the worst of it. Just hanging in now, going through Casino Square. Oh, very difficult through there, big bumps on either side, and then the car, the corner just falls away from you on the left. Making things very difficult for you. And Barrico closing right up now. Offset Stewart, it's a little bit more feisty around here than my car. You won't be getting past me though, I pretty much guarantee that. I'm defending these points with my life. Exploding through the tunnel out and eyes adjust as you can't tell, very difficult, but you get used to it. Very soft in second gear now, rear tyres need a little bit of uh, looking after. Kind of fourth gear through here, running wide and then cutting back in for the swimming pool section. Here we are, just using the curve and then breaking hard to second gear. This is a lot tighter than you think it is. A lot narrower than you think it is as well. Can't really avoid the bumps out here, so you just have to be careful on them. Down to second gear again, and then to first. I try and avoid the bit on the inside. You see how bumpy it is there? And another lap completed. So many to go though. Hacking and still pulling away at the front. I'm not bothered right now. Just trying to keep Barrichello behind me. I'm slow in the first sector, but I'm alright everywhere else, so I really need to try and kind of press the advantage I have in the last couple of sectors. And right over to the right there and then back to the left and then braking as late as I dare. Very easy to get the car spun around there. So a couple of guys do it in practice and end their practice session very early. Oh, Rubens is so quick through this sector. one eye in the mirrors but coming back for too long it's so important to keep an eye forward there where that wall comes in is super dangerous very difficult to get that right and especially if you're breaking next to the wall and the wall comes in it just makes things very tricky hopefully they'll revise that in future future years but for now I've got to deal with it Ruben's having a look at the inside looks like he just clipped the wall there really trying to be quick and that's not paying off for him, he needs to be patient. Yeah. I swear if he touches me and takes me out of this position I will I will go over there and knock the head off his Brazilian soldiers. Oh he does just that, Rubens hits me on the inside. Oh it's a car okay Dickie. It feels okay. I don't think we're damaged. What was he doing? Just off my rhythm now, going over the bump. We're getting to avoid it, just making sure the car's alright. Everything feels okay in the steering. No idea what he was thinking there. There was never a move on. He came from so far behind. I think we're alright, luckily. I don't know how. He must have just touched wheels. Everything seems okay. Onwards. Kind of nice knuckle of the pressure to Rubens is gone. He'll be in the pits and tap for the placement front wing. Yeah, there's a call for it. 
All I've got to do now is just drive, drive well, as I have been doing so far. I do wonder if Yano is still in the race. Very hard to gauge at this point. Don't have much information for other cars beyond what's in front of me and what's behind me. Maybe that's best. I think the team does that just to make sure I don't think about other things too much. Just in this race where you've got to give it all your concentration. Nice and easy through there. Barry Keller going to the pits now. I wonder who will take his third position. I'm kind of hoping it'll be Yano. It looks like it's Pedro Diniz. He's still going strong in that Salva. Not had a good season so far, so... A very odd podium at the moment, with Hacken obviously being the exception, but... Not one that I'm too dissatisfied with, if I can just keep this going. Come on. So difficult after that just to pick those breaking points and get them correct. Slight deviation, you know, half a third each way equals a lot of wheel or a lot of front wing which will cost us loads of time. Suspension damage thing that I'm obviously more worried about around here. A wing can be replaced. Suspension is a lot more fickle. Tires getting a bit worn actually going through there. I don't feel as grippy as I did at the start. Trying my best to get into rhythm now that Rubens has gone. I was just looking behind me pretty much the entirety of the last couple of laps. Now he's not there. So I'm just concentrate on what's in front of me. But opening up the car feels so weird around here. Okay, so Hacken is quite far in front at the moment, which is fine. I don't plan on running him down. Opening up the car up the hill, fantastic feeling up there. But you get on the brakes so quickly again for a casino. Important to hug that wall a little bit, but the bump there makes it very difficult to stay on that line. And then you have to immediately go right. It's like Hill was actually behind Pedro at the moment, just getting that information through now. And he could be a threat. Hill is fast, but he's a good 40 seconds behind me at this point. Which is great. And then Ruben's still running in seventh. That's other points now, which is... I don't know, sort of deserving to be honest with that move. I'll be having a word with him after the race. No, I literally could not have given any more room. I was completely into the wall pretty much. I nearly touched it and he still tried to go and push me further out. There you go, just aiming those walls there. This is such an intense experience only on the 8th lap and I feel like I've driven the entire Grand Prix already I'm opening up again Captain Hackenden seems to be stabilising If it means we're getting faster or he's getting slower, I probably imagine it's the one in front because I've... Although we are now... Oh, that was close! I mean, got a little bit sideways there and the downhill, very easy to do. Just giving the wall on the inside a little tap with a the tyre there, no harm done. But it shows you how close I'm trying to run to these walls here just for that extra speed. Good luck, I don't need to do it, but... That's how I've been practising. This is it with Hakkinen? There he is, I see him, I see Hakkinen. Dicky, can I get a report? I said front wing, I can see it in front wing. He's damaged. Shiver just run down my spine. The realization that I could leave this Grand Prix. Now things are getting serious. There he is. Just cruising around to the pits. And in he goes! And I leave the scrub free, oh my god! Oh. Okay. Now is the time to really focus. 
My first pit stop isn't too long down the road. Need to make sure that's all set up right. Very difficult to do in racing conditions, of course, but it seems to all be okay. Do have some damage. I I don't think I need to repair it. The car's okay. Apparently, I mean, must have must be with that um, incident with Rubens, but it's not really affected how the car's running so far. So hard to go around this track and then set everything on the uh, the wheel as well for the guys to understand. It's so difficult. Ah, oh, we just missed that chicken. I will slow down a bit to make sure we don't get any sort of penalty. Good. I feel like I've really slowed down now. I need to continue the pace because although Hakkinen has had the issue, he is fast. And it's not out of the question that you could catch up that gap again. 17 seconds behind me currently now. Dickie, please keep me updated with that gap. So careful through there now. Time to get back onto the pace. I'm not pushing it, just like we were running before. A nice solid, a nice solid pace. I was kind of trying to sort out options for the pitting and making sure my pit stops were set correctly there, making sure the team all knew what I was going to do. And that can be distracting. So many buttons in these cockpits. So many lights and dials to look at whilst looking at that. Obviously, radio as well to talk to, and it really is a complete sensory overload at times. And sometimes slowing down is just the only way to do it. And I actually have the best lap as well. I've just noticed I have the fastest lap of the race so far on 28.2. Car oh, really feeling great. I really want to re reward my Prost mechanic for doing such a great job this weekend and getting me up there in the qualifying, but. I'm still less than halfway through this race and I can't even begin to think about that. So long to go still. Anything can happen, anything can go wrong. I can hear the crowd now, I see even even louder. My sense is going to overdrive. Can't help but worry about the brakes, without the reliability of this car. I have been quite fortunate apart from the brakes this year, but Yano hasn't, and there's nothing to say that couldn't strike me. Very difficult on the brakes there, really trying to slow it down big time. Car was very screwily around there. Hakkinen is gaining very slightly, but it's not that much of a concern for me right now. I do have to pit soon though, so he'll probably retake the lead. So our pit stop is good. Very slow pit lane here. Feels like it anyway. Very close and cramped, and I'm really thinking about where my box is now. Sort of visualising in my mind as I uh, go way through this section one more, those curves seem to be getting taller and taller. Everything just seems more difficult now, the pressure building. Focus is now starting to kick in and I feel more confident in the car again. Had a brief period there, a couple of laps where I just felt nervous. And that's still there to an aspect, but I've got a job to do. Hell has lost his rear wing. 
this is uh, Hills and who's in fourth place now. So we don't have many cars left in this Grand Prix, maybe seven. If there are more there more than a minute down. Oh, I love the notes of car still running, if you don't mind, the Gianna still running, importantly. Just so careful through that section, there's so many bumps there. And even with a soft setup, these cars are still designed for circuits, not, not roads. Packing still gaining. And if I have that there for this Monaco Grand Prix. And we're somehow in the lead. Here we have instance left, right, and center. The front, such a blur of memory. Ralph Schumacher and Cool Fast to follow each other into the wall. Michael Schumacher. Must have been fighting hacking them for position and just got it wrong and they all went out at once and promoted me to fifth uh, from fifth to second position. And Hacken had a mistake somewhere. Which meant I'm now in the lead, but he is still in the race and hot on my heels. The win is not secure yet. We have to keep driving quickly. Using almost no fuel through that section, just letting it, just squeezing it and then rolling it pretty much, just in the brakes. Very close to that wall on the right side there. See a new fastest lap. Well, how can I go fast? That's the question. That's how he gauge his pace. Okay, I'll inform the pit crew of your instructions. Okay, so pinning next lap. It seems I'll double check quickly just on my sh on my wheel just to make sure. Nicky, please confirm that I'm pitting next lap. Okay, thank you. Ready. New set of softs will be going on. No repairs made. Hopefully, we can get out nice and quick. We're on the two stops, so the fuel stop will not be long. Hackney will probably take the lead back. We'll have to see how that pans out. Oh, we're getting loose there. Tires maybe getting a little bit, a bit worn. Smashing the front of that one there, and the wheels lighting up at the rear. Give me a good send off to set of tyres that promoted me to first position. Don't want to be too silly though, could quite easily throw it in the wall. At any any point, literally any corner, my race could be ended. Miming out the action for my pit limiter button, make sure I get it done correctly on the way in. Always some procedures, anything can go wrong, just making sure that I do it right. Barry Keller encountering more issues, just like his, his aggressiveness is not paying off around here. Not my problem. Ok, 
Okay, right. There's the uh, pit entry. Having them a little bit earlier, but better safe than sorry. You can hear Hakkinen just flying past on the other side of this pit wall here. That's my pit garage. In neutral. And stop. There you go. Come on, guys. Good stop. Taking an age to work on the on the car for some reason, I don't know why. Stewart, in the that was not a decent stop. Could have been a lot quicker and Hacken's now quite far up the road. We're now in second place, but we're on new tyres. Let's see if we can't close him down. Obviously a pros taking on the McLaren seems absurd in my eyes, but we have to try and just gain time now. I'm sure his next stop will be a lot quicker than that was. Not a deal happened there. Really quite frustrating. It's important now that I put some really good laps. Make sure the tyres are up to temperature before I start pushing it massively. Still a little bit cold, just feel that they're going down into the braking zone, just in the wheel. The tyres wanting to lock. And there, the understeer comes out. But we keep that some throttle on, carry a nice bit of speed through there. Again, the understeer just making things difficult. Just hear that, my safety is roaring past on the other side of the pits. Past we've been through there and it was terrifying. I think about 13.5 seconds was the gap when we came out the pits. What's it going to be now? Fourteen. Just scraping the wall on the inside there. Outside, sorry, but we're okay. In the bumper there, just really focusing on this next corner and just forgetting it existed. The understeer really is quite prevalent, I can feel it. And these tires warm up quickly. Very hard to get tires warm around here. Not really many corners where you scrape the front tires through. Sprinkle's probably the best section for it. Oh, Hacker's made another mistake, another front wing gone. What is going on in this race? Same place as well. Must be kicking himself. Hacking in the pits and we'll take the lead of the race once more. Got one down to see furious of him. Why didn't this get past him though? Looks like he's out of the pits now. I was hoping Pedro would get in front of him and that would have really helped out a lot. Looks like it isn't to be. Is that Pedro running some sort of one stop? A lot slower. Still stop will be not too long. That'll take us to the end. Of course, I still need to push. Obviously, Hacken is going to be a threat throughout the race, even losing two front wings, he's still quick. Uh, pits again. Shows the difference between the power of the two cars and just how superior that McLaren is. But again, this is I speak. I'm being gifted this win at the moment. 
Oh god, just keep pushing, I really do. The nearest now in front of Hackenden. My main threat. I think gone for now. So about out surviving other cars around here and we've done that best so far. Such a slog of a race, there's so many laps. Hacking is so far behind now. Oh, wiped the sweat from my brow, but there wasn't a helmet in the way and I wasn't gripping this wheel with all my might. Oh, brakes not quite as responsive through there as normal. Hope that's not a sign of something to come. Brake duct size was increased for this race, just as a precaution. I'm really hoping they don't give up on me now. Tears is the only word. and close to that apex again. Still can't believe I'm running first. So many laps led for this race. Pulling away for Pedro. Good second or two a lap. He must be on a one stop. My concern is that I need to put out a gap big enough. By the time I need to pit again, he is no longer a threat. Because even if he gets in front of me, even if he's on the one stop, then I'm in serious trouble. I said overtaking around here is super difficult. Even if I am on a uh, quicker, a quicker car at that point in the race, if you have track position around here, it's just so difficult to overtake. I still have the best lap at the moment. ridiculous thing to even comprehend right now. I can hear, I think that's Hackenden actually going past the Mercedes engine in very distinct in tone, which means he's um, by the first corner. I don't think there's many cars left in this motor race right now, but that's okay with me. my consistency questions after my results so far and I really would love just to take this and shove it in the face of my critics but I've got to go I've got to get it first if I crash out now then it'd be worse if I crashed out at the start Okay. Oh. Just thoughts again of what happened if I won this race, what it would mean to me, my family, my country, my team, everyone. But I can't, I can't let that, I can't let that thought grow. I need to really focus. I can enjoy it all I want after the Grand Prix, but right now I need to just look forward. Throttle feels odd around there. A little bit of a bump coming from Anthony Nose. Very easy to uh, mess that up. So we're going to get an opportunity now to quickly have a look and see who's where. See who's still in the race. Nice and easy through Casino. I think about fourth, but then going back down to third there just because. 24 seconds now, is that is a healthy gap 
above half a minute and I think we will be safe for the pit stop so we'll keep pushing until then. Herbert now in third place doing a good job of running still. Hacking is still around somewhere I can hear the McLaren. Max and Nardi in fourth. Very unusual placements right now. Just people who have just survived. The big names going out, of course. I think Barrett Callow is probably out now. He's lost his rear wing more times than I can count. There you go. Hacken still running in fifth place. He's still looking for those points, which will increase his lead. And his team's lead. I can't believe the ridiculousness of the situation. Slide down a bit, just for my nerves come down again. A little twitch there into the braking zone, that was a little bit scary, but we're okay. Last stop's going to be a short one, which is good with me. At least we can just sort of. A little burst to the end there, left field goes in the better. Kind of preemptively turning, going to the right there of that bump, it just seems quicker than me than going from left to right. And all the car accelerating that sort of change direction is quite difficult to deal with. So, got barriers everywhere, just exploding into the tunnel. Look for weighing anchor as we go through the harbour area. these trees above us I kind of think you'd be careful with leaves but I've not seen any so far see we're in the uh, very warm part of the world right now it's sweltering in the car but to be honest it's at the back of my mind compared to what is happening right now so I have tunnel vision Petro's got to stop soon. Two tanks just aren't that big. Again, hacking them with the front wing. I'm surprised they've still got more to put on there. Surely they'll have to bring him in soon. I don't know if anyone running behind him. I think there's only five cars running at the moment, I'm unsure. Oh, nearly spin into the wall there. Heart jumps into my mouth for a second. Oh. This track will just bite you every opportunity. Turning in fourth again, turning in late, riding the curb slowly, could go faster through there but not worth it, still pulling away from Pedro, even kind of in the semi-cruising mode, which is really good for us. The gap still not where I want it to be, maybe sped up a little bit now, wow, rear tire starting to feel a little bit second hand now. Those softs are quick around here. I'm starting to wonder how hard it would have been. I shouldn't wonder so much as it softly got me into this position. I can hear a car behind me. Who is that? Oh, it's Hakkinen. See, he's now over a lap down and he's now behind me. This could be very interesting. I might just let him go. I don't want him to be too eager and try and unlap himself and cause some contact with me. It's just not worth the issue. We could try to get away from him. I can't really afford to let him down. I need to keep that gap to Petro. I'm not sure when he's pitting. Or if he's already pitted, I've not been told about it.
Oh, a little bit too shallow there on the curb. Need to be careful of that. Quite easily get a penalty for cutting the course. Nothing come through yet though, which is good. And again, the car feeling a little bit wiggly through there. This pressure of hacking, pressure of having hacking them behind me is quite something. He's not for position, but I know he could try something silly. Just unlap himself. Only 12 laps to go now. Getting to the last third of the race. Hacking so fast through the first sector, I forgot how quick it was through there. Obviously I've been on my own for this entire race, having a car behind me is quite odd now actually. Obviously I'm a little bit anxious seeing how Ruben thought he could do what he wanted to do. So now I'm doing the pits now though. He must be in the one stop which means that we might see Pedro coming soon as well. I'll just listen out and see if Sal will get into the pit lane or not. I would like to scout the way of hacking and let him pass. Hacking in the wall behind me there. Surprised he's still going. I just saw him scrap the wall. It looks like his car really is beating up. Looks like Pedro's coming in, Sal are ready for the call. Which means what I've got to do is drive the line and I can win this race. Oh, it's so difficult. They're going to be coming in very soon. I'll sort that out just so I get into the tunnel. Nice and careful through there. Gonna be over in the fuel by fuel in the car by quite a bit, but I sort of don't care. So make sure I get to the end now. I'm gonna pick this up and release hacking them. He looks up the inside, does he? No, he's really close to me. Just gonna pick this up, get the soft tyres, get it done. And hopefully get away from Hakkinen and his uh, very feisty looking beaten up Mercedes. In we come. Last stop of the race. Guys, to work straight away there. Truly is out. You can see the car there. Wonder when he went out. Car is good. Pissed up. Done. Great stop by my guys. Only 8.3 seconds this time. And that we are still in the lead. Herbert now the guy behind us. And the other Stuart. He's got to drive to the line now. There you go. Herbert in the pits as well. All about chilling out against the line. Hacken's been released. No more issues from him, hopefully. Steering very light. Not much fuel on board, and the tyres are fresh, so got to be careful with them. Whatever damage we did have hasn't caused us any issues at all. Maybe some sort of side pod damage, I know. Guys are so quick, the rest of game time on this and the start. Fantastic job on my cross mechanics. Bring that little extra in there just to make sure we get to the end. Don't want to run out of fuel around here, that would be heartbreaking. Come on, just got to focus now, not long left at all. Just 
looks like Mika on a charge now. Maybe to try and catch some of the guys in front of him, but hopefully the lead is well out of his grasp. Just a difficult braking zone this, even after all this time I still think, oh the understeer, the tyre's not quite warm yet. Gotta be careful. after this race I thought it was temporary I thought we we're out of sync with other people but no we've been in first for the majority of the race now other cars just faltering around me Hacken is now smashing it around but I'm not bothered I'm in full chill mode now. A bit wide there through Razkath, but it doesn't matter. Hard to believe that 22 cars set up at the start of this race. I think only five left now in the race. Such attrition. Dickie was joking me that he thinks that Takagi is probably my nearest rival now in the championship after the last race. Obviously it wasn't well received by me, especially after the break failure, but now I can prove them all. Well, I'm not just going over a single lap, if I can just get to the end. Nothing is certain at Monaco. Breaking a lot earlier than usual, just not going for the best lap time, he's still pulling away from Pedro regardless being early and easy on the brakes still playing in my mind look at the crowds Been a growing number of Union Jacks over the weekend. So swelling up right there, see whenever I see one. It's just for Herbert, it seems, but I don't care. I'm only worried about number one right now. And number 18, should I say. Issues late in the race for some people. Looks like Nada's going to be out as well. Even the left finishes. Maybe a contact with Herbert. Just arguing over that last podium position, I wouldn't blame him. counting down the laps, I wish he wouldn't do that. Oh, and the 
rest of it later down there. I think I'm catching somebody. Not sure who it is. Didn't sound like a McLaren, so I'm going to guess it's either Herbert or Sinadi. I think that was uh, Stuart I just caught a glimpse of there. So it must have been Herbert. Only swimming for a split second though. How can we manage to fight his way back to third position? What a talented driver. Five that's remaining. Thought I saw our Pumas make them a bit of the clouds, almost panicking for the uh, reliability of others. You see, my own car failed me in the last race about this point, so I'm hoping that doesn't happen again. I'm winning it. So important for the team. Thoughts starting to come back into my mind now as Herbert gets closer. We need the finale of this race. Still a couple laps to go though. Hackman's still throwing the car around, desperately trying to catch the Nizda, the sounds of it. Trying to salvage this race, a race that he could have easily won. further away than that Decky, you know that. No tracking me on my toes, but come on, be honest with me. Oh uh, yeah, now I just want to get through and done. Mika has lost his oh Mika, it's got to be the last one now, surely. Mika has lost his rear wing. Oh Hakkinen's out! Rear end gone so close to the end of the race as well. Surely that can't be when you've got three cars running now. Oh, I just completely messed that up. The brake's far too late. Slow down over it though. No time gained. Well, I catch her before the end of the race. I'm not hoping I won't. I might just stay behind him if I do. And going to retire. It's been an awful race for pretty much everyone apart from the guys left on the circuit right now. But it's been a victory. Oh wow. Thank you for Dickie for being actually honest at that. We're actually from 25 to 40 seconds. Interesting, eh? Closer and closer, I'm just thinking about my strategy when I get there. I don't want him to get involved and ruin what has been so far a dream of a race.
Oh, he's very slow through there. Just gonna stay behind him for now. He seems really, he's just hitting every wall. Every wall. There's no point me racing him or trying to get past him. Here we are, last lap at one. Just cruising now. Still catching Herbert though. Nice and easy. Surprised he's not getting out of the way. He must be getting loads of blue flags by now. Waiting for the penalty to come for him, I guess. I'm not really pressuring him to get past. Can't tell if he's let me pass or not. As he goes flying into the wall, I managed to avoid his rear wing. He's pretty much a lap down anyway. If I passed him now, he would have finished the race. Oh, he turns into me! Just managed to avoid him. No damage, I think. The suspension may be skewed slightly to the left. I don't need that panic, Johnny. I hear him crash again behind me. That is his final lap. He comes home in third. Car or not, and I go on to my final lap now. There's a couple of miles left. Oh, I'm not going to stop, Dickie. Whole body going tense. Gotta keep it together just for one more lap. Not even that now. Just completely chilling out. I've got no one anywhere near me. There's no point in pushing at all. Oh, heart attack after what happened with Herbert just then. Double drivers having a hell of a Grand Prix. Somehow I managed to rise above the rest of them. Not at the end, Nick, though. It can all go horribly wrong. Going super slow, being really kind on the brakes. Not caring at all about the lap time. I'm very, I'm well aware that Pedro is getting me, but I don't care. Going for a swimming pool for the last time. Crowds on their feet. I can see them now. Super loud. Goosebumps running up and down my body as I come through the rest castle for the last time. Up the hill to Anthony Nose. Last corner. And then drive to the line. <laughs> I win my first Grand Prix. Yes! Congratulations, you've won the Monte Carlo Grand Prix. At the end of an unbelievable Monaco Grand Prix, here are the final results. The Prost driver, first. Diniz, second. 
With the results confirmed, it's high time we updated the Drivers' Championship. Schumacher first. McLaren continue to lead the Constructors' Championship. Ferrari are second, followed by the third place, Stewart. Wow, what a Grand Prix. I'm completely elated right now. Exuberant. I don't know, there's no other word for it. I somehow kept it together, came from fourth in the grid. Everyone around me seemed to just crumble, but the profs kept strong. My team were fantastic in the pits. And you know what? I didn't put a foot wrong. Maybe one maybe one mistake, but it didn't cost me any time. And you made me uh, pull myself a little bit, but uh, I made it to the end. I beat everyone else. That's my first Grand Prix victory. Something that I'm going to remember for the rest of my life.